hurricanes and uh, things happen to change the schedule, but uh, you know, I've been staying in contact with the congressman who has been a steadfast advocate for this area, believe me, uh, to make sure that, that uh, appropriate uh, federal aid comes here. And, uh, you know, I feel a special kinship with this uh, area of the Fayetteville because my college roommate, uh, Dr. Larry Harris, was uh, from Fayetteville and uh, had an opportunity to come down here and visit a couple of times. I always got to hear everything we would to hear about Fort Bragg. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have been quite impressed to see uh, the resilience that's been demonstrated in this area. Uh, after the uh, hurricanes and the floods. Uh, it was about 17 months ago, but uh, for the people who were impacted, it, it seemed like yesterday, and we recognize that. And uh, recognize also that, you know, the system that exists uh, can use some uh, improvement because it takes so long to get things done. And, uh, you know, that's primarily because uh, people who met well have just layered uh, things one on top of the next and have made it very difficult to quickly and efficiently be able to get aid to people. I uh, met earlier this week with uh, Homeland Security Secretary Nelson and uh, with Administrator Brock Long uh, for FEMA and uh, Energy Secretary Perry uh, to talk about what we could do uh, between our agencies and some of the others, because there are actually 17 agencies that are involved in these things. It's a little bit too much, quite frankly, particularly if you're the person uh, whose home has been affected and you don't know exactly who you have to deal with. And, you know, if you deal with this one, then did, did that interfere with your ability? I mean, it's just crazy. And, uh, <laughs> We're fixing that because we recognize that it's craziness. It doesn't do anybody any good. It's going to get fixed. But in the meantime, <clears throat> we've uh, worked out uh, some of the issues with um, the uh, $236 million that have been advocated previously for this region. Uh, I think uh, Congressman Pittenger will have some uh, good news about some additional funds that have been allocated with. Uh, uh, alteration in the cap. So uh, I, I think we're going to find a way to get this area taken care of, but uh, I have been very impressed with the resilience that I've seen here. People able to uh, very quickly move in themselves and, uh, you know, mitigate the situation and then say, you know, whatever help you give us, that's fine, but we're not waiting. I love that. That's, a, that's, a, that's the right attitude. But we want to fix it so that you don't even have to have that attitude. And, and uh, that's one of the goals that we have. Thank you. I'd be glad to respond to questions that you may have. I will say to the point that the Secretary referred to last night, or early this morning, in our budget uh, we approved, um, we uh, were able to receive $125 million more for funding relative to the hurricanes for North Carolina. So the Secretary is open to the Yes, uh, I'm Councilman Larry Wright here in the city of District 7. Um, my district was probably the hardest hit in Matthews. Uh, Hollywood Heights is one of the areas that I uh, that I counseled. Had a meeting last night with about 50 of those residents. Um, about 13 homes on the low end were hit, and they were devastated, mostly senior citizens. And it's been over a year now, and most of those uh, have opted for a buyback program, and I've been kind of working to try to get them uh, back to a quality of life. Uh, you know, most of them are 70, 80 years old. And uh, it's heart-wrenching to see that, that they're still displaced even now. Um, just got out of that meeting, and it's kind of, kind of heated. And, uh, and so my question is, you know, and you alluded to it, it takes so long. Uh, and I think the money has been allocated, uh, money is coming down, but it's trickling. And, and, but the people that are suffering the most are, are, are those residents that just don't see it. And it'll be at least two and a half to three years, it looks like now, before they can even get that buyback money. So yes. what's 
take it so long? Well, I've been asking that same question. Um, and probably irritating a lot of people by doing so. But uh, we're going to stay on that. Uh, first of all, thank you for your service to the people. And thank you for uh, representing. I appreciate that. Um, and we have found that uh, the neighborhoods that have community organizations, that have people who get together and talk, uh, do tend to get a little more attention. So I, I encourage that. The squeaky wheel does get the oil. It shouldn't be that way. Uh, but it is that way. But again, uh, what, what we decided after our meeting on Monday is that we need to kind of scrap all these things that have been uh, put in place before and, and start all over again. Uh, because there are a lot of good elements uh, in all the different agencies, but unless they're coordinated the right way, it just gets in people's way. And, you know, my suggestion is that we th we ask ourselves, what if it was us, or what if it was our family, what, what would we be doing? And I, I think that's the only way you can approach these situations. So uh, do recognize that this administration understands that that is a big issue. And uh, I'm not going to rest until we get it taken care of. Questions for the media only, please. Uh, do you have a sense for um, uh, when the uh, CDBG disaster recovery money is going to be released? I think there's 35 million for Cumberland County and 70 million for Robinson County, and, and, and there's at least uh, I think 200 people have applied for it. Do I know the exact time of its release? I know that it has been uh, approved, and uh, you know the way that I'm kind of looking at things, and the way that we're looking at it is we get that money into the hands of the state and local officials and they will make the decisions on exactly how it's released from there but uh, that is the big push right now and I think that is complete or almost complete. Dr. Carson, you toured um, this facility here, this is this put together by HUD money, um, the Hope 6 project here. Yes. And there's hope to revitalize uh, Ruby Terrace, which is another housing area, long-term housing area. Yes, yes. Good thoughts walking around seeing the townhouses that were built with um, federal money. Uh, well, what's been done here, I think, is spectacular. I mean, anybody would like to live there. You know, the facilities are beautiful. There's a salon. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> this is great. I said, can I move in here and get a haircut? This is great. Um, no, but. And this was a, an area that's particularly set aside for the elderly. And it is my strong belief that as a humane society, we need to do everything we can to make sure that our elderly, you know, experience comfort in their uh, last years of life. And there's an old Chinese saying that says, you can determine the morality of a society by how they take care of their elderly. And uh, so, as far as I'm concerned, that's a non-issue. Uh, what we do have to spend a little more time talking about are those individuals who find themselves who are not elderly, uh, who are not disabled, but who seem to be stuck. And uh, I think one of the reasons that a lot of people get stuck is because you know, in Washington, we come up with these self-sufficiency programs and say, you know, you do this and you climb this thing. And then as soon as they start climbing the ladder, we pull their support. Well, you know, everybody else is kind of looking and they say, I'm not going up that ladder. That doesn't make any sense. So in, in a way, we've sort of perpetuated that problem. Uh, there's a multi-agency council now that is looking at that issue and making sure that we ameliorate that problem so that we don't have that. We want to encourage people. And, you know, the definition of success is not how many people we get into federal aid situations, but how many we get out of it. And, you know, giving people hope, real hope, uh, once again, I, I personally believe that that's the reason that we're having an opioid crisis in our country because there's so many people who just have lost hope you know they're looking for some relief they're looking for something to fill in those areas of their lives and we've got to start thinking about that you know we're a rich country 
and we have a lot of very philanthropic people here. One of the things that we have not done well is marry the need to the resources. Need here, resources here, sometimes side by side, no ability to merge the two. Uh, we're working very hard on that with our Envision centers, and you'll be hearing a lot more about that. Last question. Secretary Carson, so how soon again, you know, can this community expect to get those funds for Hurricane Matthew recovery process? As soon as possible. Um, they've been okayed, and the people who uh, are dispersing the funds have been notified that, you know, these kinds of delays are intolerable, and they, they need to be thinking about it uh, as if it was them. Uh, who was in need. But the problem, of course, has been the enormous amount of regulatory burden that sits there, particularly environmental stuff. And at some point, we just have to be able to say, look, let's exempt them from that because there is no evidence that X, Y, and Z is going on. Uh, and that's the problem with bureaucracy. Bureaucrats, they sit there and they spend all the time concentrating on the rules and no time concentrating on what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, we're getting rid of that very rapidly at HUD. So I would say help is definitely on the way. And it's going to be coming a lot quicker than it would have been coming before. One question for Congressman, please. One question for Congressman. Twenty fifth hour last night, we were able to avoid an end the budget shutdown. How many, how many more times are we going to take the can down the road on on uh, keeping the government open? Well, this past year we passed for 018 the appropriations, uh, all 12 appropriations in the House. Uh, we're challenged in the Senate getting those appropriations for funding our government. Uh, that's the prudent way to manage these continuing resolutions and funding. Uh, it's not the right approach. And uh, those of us who believe in, in good management of resources uh, seek uh, to pursue that. And uh, I would uh, defer your question to my colleagues in the United States Senate. <laughs> uh, let me just thank the mayor for your leadership and the committee you serve. Uh, our office will be fully committed to you. And uh, uh, we're here to support you in every way we can, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you all.